This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're doing a comparison between the Motorola Zoom Android Honeycomb tablet on the left with the 10.1 inch display and the Apple iPad 2 with the 9.7 inch display. Now, recently we did a comparison of the original iPad, but obviously the iPad 2 changes the game in certain ways and brings up the specs to be a bit more comparable with the Motorola Zoom. So you can see they're both, well, similarly sized. Motorola is a tad taller, but it is narrower, and it has more of a widescreen aspect ratio. You can see them on top of each other. Of course, the iPad 2 gets thinner, and it's 0.34 inches, crazy thin, versus the Motorola Zoom, which is like the original iPad, it's about a half an inch. Motorola has slightly straightened edges here, there is a curve to the back, but the straightened edges make it much easier to hold on to, as does the soft touch finish take a look at the construction. They're both made of metal, primarily. This guy again has the soft touch coating over here. This part is plastic up top to improve reception for antennas, just like the 3G version of the iPad 2. We have the Wi-Fi only version, so we don't have that, but there would be a black plastic band up here for that. They're both nice looking tablets. Clearly the Apple has more high style modern thin design, but this is not a bad looking tablet either. And Honestly, you shouldn't be buying these based on looks alone. They're both nice looking tablets, but we should care more about the functions and the features and the software than just simple cosmetics. The iPad has a 9.7 inch IPS display, which means it has wide viewing angles, and it's very sharp and very colorful. It has 133 ppi pixel density, while the Motorola Zoom is a bit higher at 160 ppi because it has a higher resolution. This is 1280 by 800 pixels, whereas this is still 1024 by 768. Personally, I prefer the higher resolution when it comes to looking at web pages because you just never side to side scroll on the zoom and it gives you a more PC-like experience combined with the tab web browser inside. 1280 by 800 is pretty much a standard notebook resolution too, so it's something that we're used to looking at when reviewing web pages, Excel spreadsheets, and the like. In terms of cameras, this is the first iPad to have a camera, and it's got this main rear camera here, and it's a 0.7 megapixel camera, not very good quality. Motorola Zoom has a 5 megapixel camera. They can both shoot 720p video at 30 fps, but you would, as you would guess, given the much better camera on here, the Motorola blows away the iPad. Motorola also has a dual LED flash on the back. iPad has no flash. In terms of speakers, it's funny because you would think Apple, given their iTunes heritage, would start getting into stereo speakers, but now we have the mono speaker here under this grill, and for the zoom, we have stereo speakers on the rear. Now, neither of these is going to exactly fill up a concert hall with music anyway, but it is nicer to have the dual speakers on the Moto. Now, in terms of connectors, the Motorola has a standard micro USB port and a micro HDMI port that you can plug directly into your TV, projector, whatever you've got with HDMI and a teeny little charging port here. And Apple, of course, continues with their well-known 30-pin dock connector over here that handles USB syncing file transfer. And if you want to do HDMI out, you're going to have to buy their $39 HDMI dongle adapter to do that. So there's a price difference between these two. The comparable iPad 2 would be the 32 gig Wi-Fi plus 3G model for $729, whereas the Motorola without a contract is $799. If you add on the cost of the $39 HDMI adapter, and then of course the SD card adapter, which is really called the camera connection kit for the iPad, that's another $29, and that only gives you access to pictures, whereas the SD card slot that's under a door here, still waiting for a Google software update to enable it, this holds up to a 32 gig card here, and that can access any kind of file, ebooks, Word documents, Excel documents, videos, you name it. So that's where you're getting for a little bit of extra money. The Motorola Zoom also gets a free upgrade to 4G LTE, high speed data, in the future, whereas the iPad is 3G on Verizon, 3G on AT&T, just 3G. In terms of general specs, these are awfully similar. This has a dual core NVIDIA Tegra 2 CPU with a GPU for graphics acceleration. This is a dual core A5, that's an Apple custom design chip made by Samsung, I believe, also with a GPU that's quite capable. The iPad 2 has 512 megs of RAM, which is double the original iPad, but still only half of what the Zoom has at a gig of RAM. 
But then again, the iPad seems to run just fine on that amount of memory. So, hey. This guy has a 2 megapixel front facing camera and a 5 megapixel rear camera. This one has a VGA webcam up front and a 0.7 megapixel camera at the back, lower resolution. They both have Wi Fi 802.11 BGN, Bluetooth 2.1 plus EDR. And this guy comes with 3G and the 4G upgrade option. And there will be a Wi Fi version of this for $5.99, we hear, but currently, right now, it's just available with 3G on or off contract. You can get it $5.99 with a contract on Verizon. $7.99 if you just want to go month to month or not have any 3G data at all. The iPad, of course, sells for $4.99 for the basic 16 gig Wi Fi only model, up to $8.29 for the 64 gig 3G plus Wi Fi model. And this guy weighs 1.33 pounds or so, and this guy weighs 1.5 pounds. That's close enough, we're talking a couple of ounces here, that you're really not going to feel the difference in weight. Of course, the iPad runs iOS, iOS 4.3, and this is running Android OS 3.0, which is Honeycomb, a tablet-optimized operating system from Google. But specs aren't the whole story here. Of course, iOS is a well-loved operating system. It's incredibly easy to use. It's perfect, especially for non-techie folks. You turn it on, here are your icons. You can't go wrong. iPad 2 is very fast for scrolling back and forth through all that and for launching all of your applications and settings. For example, that goes up instantly. You can switch between here and here. Very fast compared to the original iPad. Here we have quick access to settings by doing this, and you can change your screen brightness no matter where you are in any application, this is always available. So you can control your notifications, you can lock the screen orientation, control your wireless modes, change the brightness, get to all settings here. This is also likewise quite fast. With Android Honeycomb, which has been designed for tablets, you have a multi-page home screen which is pretty much similar in concept to what you've got on regular Android phones running Froyo or whatever version you've got. You can swipe between the screens, and I've got ones here for my calendar. I've got a Twitter app, I've got shortcuts to home pages that I like, of course a whole bunch of icons over here for my favorite apps. And if I want to get to all applications, I just tap up here, and then I get the grid view of icons similar to what you see on the iPad. Now this is a matter of personal preference as to which you like better. If you want the customizability of the widgets and the home screen and the notifications that Android offers, then obviously the Zoom has a leg up. If you just want simplicity, a straightforward user interface that's icon based with minimal notification capabilities, the iPad 2 is a great choice. Also in terms of application selection, because this has only been out a few weeks, the, the tablet operating system, there's about 130 applications right now that are particularly optimized for tablet, whereas this has been out for 9-10 months, so we've got 65,000 to choose from, so that's a lot. One could say, how many clocks do you need or add-on applications, but it's more than just that. With 65,000 to choose from, you have a broad selection of applications to go with here. And you have to wait a bit longer here to see certainly that kind of selection available. Also, when it comes to gaming, my god, iOS has an amazing array of games, from children's games to casual games to really cutting-edge 3D games, whereas Android still hasn't caught up yet. A lot of that has to do with DRM issues and application developers wanting to make sure that they're hard work is actually paid for. So we're just starting to see stuff now, and also because of the Tegra 2 dual-core CPU in here, it's quite capable. And we'll take a look at a game on each, but honestly, right now, the gaming performance is fairly comparable. So now we're going to take a look at Samurai 2 Vengeance on both platforms, starting with Android. Now we're going to take a look at the same game, Samurai 2 Vengeance, on the iPad 2.
It's interesting, it lags in the same places as it did on the zoom. Occasional little pause. Thank you very much. Compare basically the same application on both platforms. We've got CNN for tablet here on the Motorola Zoom and the CNN for iPad on the iPad. As you can see, the experience is quite similar right here. We've got a little left nav over here turned on at the moment, but in terms of speed, they're the same and they're both going to use the same mobile optimized video, which means it doesn't require flash, so you're going to get the same kind of performance. And Jim Walsh, an international security analyst and new CNN contributor. Welcome to the program. What's happening inside these plants right now? Uh, Looks fine as you'd expect. Plays fine. Cool. And we'll play the same thing up on the Zoom now. In Boston, Jim Walsh, an international security analyst and new CNN contributor. Welcome to the program. What's happening inside these plants right now? Uh, they must be furiously trying to cool these fuel rods and prevent um, a meltdown of the core. And there it is. Exactly. That's precisely what they're doing, Christine. And as a result, they find themselves in a dilemma. As you... So I would expect as both platforms mature, particularly Android, because it has some catching up to do, you're going to pretty much see the same application available on both platforms. Now in terms of ebook readers, you get Apple's iBooks reader, of course, on the iPad, and here you get Google Books because Google also has their own ebook store, and we'll take a look at those. On both of these platforms, you can go ahead and put on Kindle, Nook, Kobo Books, whatever you want, Stanza, all the applications that are available. Hopefully that will stay the same since Apple's looking for a 30% cut into sales for in-app purchases. Hopefully we'll see Kindle and Nook and all the others stay on iOS. So here you've got the interface here. This uses the bookshelf metaphor that's pretty popular and that you've also seen some other ebook readers and this does this kind of thing right here. Whichever it is, it doesn't really matter. We'll just pick book and you can see what it looks like. Either one offers facing pages and they both have page turn animations and you can set your font size and do searches in both applications. Oddly Google Books does not have a bookmarking feature. Bad Google. Bad, bad Google. It does remember the last page that you left off. But you can make notes, you can do highlights, but you can't actually put in bookmarks just yet. And then we'll take a look at PDFs. You can open up PDFs inside of iBooks and use Apple's rendering engine for that. We're going to look at the same book. And here you have Adobe Reader, which may or may not give you more features. Let's see. So you have pretty much identical rendering. This says pinch zooming, and because it's Adobe Reader, you get a couple of options here. You can choose your view mode. View mode. You can choose fit to screen, continuous scroll, or reflow the text, which will blow out any images. Obviously, for a print book like this, it doesn't really matter. With iBooks, it zooms the existing page, and it does not carry over. When you switch pages, it goes back to normal view. Other than that, they're pretty much identical. Lastly, we're going to compare the web browsers. Of course, the iPad has Safari, Apple's browser. And this has Google's browser, which is much like Chrome. This is a tabbed web browser. Here we still don't have tabs. And we're going to go to the same website with both. And the cache has been emptied on both of these two make the test as even as possible and the zoom was faster for that particular page. Now I have enhanced the zoom here. Adobe Flash 10.2 is coming out in a couple of days for the zoom and I've gotten a hold of that early pre-release so we don't know how much better even the full actual real release is going to be so this guy is loading flash ads and such on the page if they happen to be there. The iPad does have a brighter display which I have to admit I do like. And if you want to watch some flash
in action, we can do it right here in our video review of the iPad 2. To full screen. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the iPad 2 from Apple. So this is real flash so playing right now, 360p resolution, full and screen. It's an evolutionary improvement. As you can see Doing fine. Front, you, you Doing really well. You'll be able to tell whether this was the original iPad or the iPad 2, except for the little pinhole front facing. And now we're going to play the same thing on the iPad. This is going to use the mobile YouTube player, and you don't have all the controls, obviously, that you would if you had full flash. And we're going to switch to full screen mode. Just stretches this is Lisa it out. from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the iPad 2 from Apple. Strangely, there's no like generation tablet, and it's an evolutionary improvement. Stop, start, the front, you control on the iOS the version of this. The iPad 2, except for the little pinhole front-facing video chat camera up front. So there we've compared the web browser, Flash, uh, games, books, several other things on both of these very nice tablets. And they both have their merits. I'd say if you want to play games, particularly, boy, you got to get an iPad. Right now, the library of games out there is wonderful, and as we know, the performance is generally very good on that. If you want something that's more like a computer stand-in, I would still say, as I said with the original iPad, that Motorola Zoom is better for that. You've got a higher resolution display, a tab browser, you've got Flash, you've got full access to the file system. It's real easy to get any kind of file, image, video, any kind of book format, whatever it is you want on and off this guy and you don't have to go through an iTunes syncing conduit to get your files on and off which makes it a bit more flexible to do what you want to do when you want to do it. And once the SD card slots activated it's going to be a very handy powerful viewer for looking at your camera images in the field. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full comparison.